the morning started with Dr. Kurkos' explanation of being born. Now, he did not know that I was born in a, into a musical family, and they say my mother had a tremendous difficult delivery, giving birth to a child with a violin in his hand. I was born in Tehran, quite far away, but I grew up in Vienna, the capital city of music. And throughout all my trips in the world, I have seen different cultures of music. And it has enriched me, also through the festivals that I have founded, to meet musical friends and the culture of music throughout the world has helped me to understand that music is maybe more than just uh, appreciating a few moments. When they asked Johann Sebastian Bach what music was, he answered it is a language. Language is for communication. Music is just waves in the air that reaches our ear through the nerves. It's transported to our brain. It touches our heart if we do not use only the brain. And finally, it becomes food for the soul. But music is also like a ladder, a ladder on which souls may ascend to the realm on high. But if you want to have a very simple definition, music is just a combination of different notes. That's all. Now, this, for me, is music the initiative of TED Worldwide, but your initiative here in Bratislava. Seeing all you sitting here, each one of you and myself, we are like notes in one musical symphony. But what is a note? If I play just a few notes together, different notes following each other. But if I would take just one of them out of one of them, the empty A string, you call it La, A string. We hear the sound, we give it a name, but is this the reality of the tone? Like each one of us. You, I see you, sh your shining faces, you see me standing here dressed up for you. <laughs> but is this the reality you see? Now, the reality of the note is many waves. We call them overtones. You remember from your school time. Those overtones are all these overtones vibrating together, making one note. We call it la or a. Without the vibration of those other overtones, the sound would be noise and terrible to hear. So we don't, have, we don't want, I think, to have just noise in the world. We want to have music. And that is why we have to think about ourselves. Do we want to be noises or do we want to be a sound? Now, what are the, the overtones we have, each one of us? We call them qualities or virtues, what kind of qualities do we have to make a life? Love, justice, what else? Friendship, Friendship. honesty, peace. peace, truthfulness, trustworthiness, and the most difficult for myself at the end is patience. We try to work on these qualities. It takes us a lifelong time. Sometimes we think that's the only aim. 
It's like the following joke, because in this joke you can understand what I want to say. It was a concert hall bigger than this. A whole orchestra was playing on the stage, and uh, there were listeners in a dramatic part where every instrument was playing his role. The contrabass group who was standing here, and the contrabass is like a violin, but much bigger, of course. <laughs> Everybody was moving up and down with the fingers very fast, but one of them was just holding the fingerboard. So somebody who was uh, watching went after the concert to the musician and said, sorry, I saw in one place everybody was doing like this and that, but you were just holding the strings. Why was it like that? He said, you know, the others were looking for the right tone. I had already found it. <laughs> This can be only a joke, because playing always the same tone all the time, it must be very boring. And this is with human society also. We have to have an interrelation, we have to have a relationship with other people. Then music starts. If I take one melody, a simple melody, If I join more voices to this, it becomes richer. This is what happens in an orchestra. I couldn't bring the whole orchestra with me. It's just the violin, but you can understand, and you know, of course. But important is not only that we have the sound together. We know rhythm is one of the most important part of music. Rhythm will lift us up to certain other degrees of feeling the music. A rhythm is, in fact, the first thing the baby listens to in mother's womb. It's the heartbeat. But we are going through transition times, as we saw in the very first pictures, until we are born. And also, when we are born, we have transition times, not only individually, but also in the whole society. And the question is, how do we manage those transition times? In musical world, we call it, let's say, an accelerando, or ritardando, with changing from one rhythm to another level of rhythm. The ending of the melody was like this. This was a transition period from the meditative or contemplative part of the melody shifting to a more dancing part, creating future today. This is the main aspect I have read from TED. And I think that's one of the best slogans or words or aims we could have in our life. Now, what could be the future of an orchestra? To find a unity in its big variety, all the different instruments, <clears throat> everybody playing different notes, but united we are through one common vision for the future. That is the final composition. And united we are through the feeling of the rhythm. If we don't feel the rhythm together, we can never 
go forward. Now, the future I see for all these beautiful nodes in the world is this earth as one country and mankind as its citizen. This is the aim it's worth striving for. It's not easy, of course. This is a work we have to concentrate on, like in a transition period. What is the role of the individual now in this process? You remember the violin? Let us compare the individual now with the violin itself. If you take it, you see it has an head, it has a neck, it has a body. Unfortunately, in German language, we have a, a definition. We don't say the violin, we say die violine. It's female. And that's beautiful. Maybe the future will uh, be a balance between male and female. That would be wonderful. But what's the most important part of the violin you can't see? This is a historic instrument. But what is the most important part we cannot see? It's the empty space inside. This is the place where the, the air is vibrating and being transported out to all of you. If it would be filled, the sound would stop. This reminds me on a certain freedom we have to get, a detachment that we have to have in our inside life, to be free from greed, from envy, from hate, from all kinds of prejudices. Something we can work on and we have to work on every day. It's very difficult. But then, if everything is ready, you can put the violin on the wall and enjoy a beautiful instrument. It doesn't sound. It must come in touch with something from outside. And that is the bow. The bow is a symbol for me now for the touch with the world around us. It can be the nature. It is the mother. It's the father. It's the family, the relationships, your partners. It's the children, it's our teachers, our students. And this touch of those two things, the outside world and the inside world, they sometimes are based on force, and that's terrible. The human history is full of these negative examples. Force never creates music. It's impossible. Sometimes the words we are using in communication, we use language. The words we are using is creating fear in us. It is impossible to have a proper connection of the bow with the string if I'm always afraid. It's not possible. The only possible idea, feeling, that is behind our words, should be behind our words, is it should transport a feeling of love from one to another. And that is the only relationship we have on the violin itself. A loving touch. Now, some of you may be not be so familiar with a string instrument or with a violin. I'm teaching you a little bit about the violin. But most of you, I'm sure, when you have been small, you have played some wind instrument. If you take the flute, the flute was originally <clears throat> made out of a bamboo. To have a flute made out of a bamboo is 
it has first to be cut in the right dimension. What we think is so important of the wood, the inside part, the pith, have to be emptied. It has to be made hollow. Then uh, the instrument maker has maybe to use some method to bring holes into the body of the wood, something maybe very painful, not easy. Now, if we take this as an example, a comparison to individuals, we have to get rid of what we think is so important, our personality, our fame, our name, our selfish desires, our wrong ideas, our prejudices, to become hollow, become a hollow reed. So I think this would be important. And difficulties we go through in our lives, painful difficulties, is enriching us, not harming us. Because if those holes were not there in the flute, you would play only one or two notes, but not the variety of the tones that is on the flute. So my wish, my desire, and I think a goal that is worth to live for throughout our lives is that we should desire, we should wish, whatever we wish we can achieve, we should wish to become like a flute, to become a hollow reed from which the pith of self and desires, the selfish desires, has been removed, has been blown out, so that we become a clear channel through which love may flow unto others. Thank you.